1946, Edgar Dale proposed an idea he called the Cone of Experience. In today's lesson, we will examine the Cone of Experience and its potential implications for the field of distance education. Edgar Dale's Cone of Experience is a visual representation of the types of experiences human beings encounter as they prepare to synthesize knowledge and convert it to understanding. Dale contends that there are many different types of experiences that humans can encounter and each level of experience results in a different level of effectiveness as it relates to the processing of knowledge. Dale divided his cone into three major categories of experiences. These categories are arranged from the most abstract to the least abstract as one travels down the cone from the top to the bottom. The first category human beings encounter is that of symbolic learning. This includes verbal and visual symbolism. In layman's terms, this level of experience involves reading, seeing, and hearing information. This category is the most abstract and is also the level on which the learner is the most passive. The second category of experiences includes experiences focused on observing. This category focuses on activities such as seeing pictures and hearing recordings of historical events, seeing motion pictures, seeing exhibits, and seeing demonstrations. As one moves to this category, we both become less abstract and more active in our learning. The final category is that of doing. This category includes actual experiences such as discussion, demonstrations that the learner provides, putting learning into practice, and actually teaching others. This category is the most active category of learning, as well as the least abstract. Dale's argument is that as one travels down the cone of experience, learning activities become more effective and learners remember more as the experiences become less abstract. Dale went on to expand upon his cone of experience by adapting his ideas in 1969. He summarized his cone by describing that people remember 10% of what they read, 20% of what they hear, 30% of what they see, 50% of what they both hear and see, 70% of what they say, and 90% of what they do. This adaptation simplified the cone of experience and made the concepts much easier to remember. This adaptation also related the cone of experience in such a way that many educators embraced the idea of the active learner and learning using real-life, non-abstract activities. Dale's cone of experience is extremely important to all levels of education. The cone of experience helps educators understand what types of activities are not only appropriate for the situation, but also what types of activities will result in maximizing student learning. While this is true for all types of education, it is especially pertinent to distance education. The nature of distance education dictates that instructors must find ways to develop activities that maximize the retention of information as students learn. Distance education, by its nature, is dependent upon the independent nature of students. Students must be motivated and driven to learn in order for distance education to be truly effective. Learners must also be autonomous if distance education systems are to be effective. The cone of experience allows instructors to develop activities that address the least abstract and most active areas of the cone of experience. The cone of experience does not exist without controversy. Many educators believe that, after studying the cone of experience, that they should only focus on the bottom of the cone. In 2007, 
Lally and Miller emphasized that the cone of experience should be viewed as a continuum of learning, not a hierarchy. In order for learners to be successful, they should engage in a variety of experiences. Instructors should develop lessons that address several levels of experiences in order to truly maximize learning potential. Distance educators should especially keep this idea in mind. Only by providing distance education students with a variety of instructional experiences can instructors truly ensure that learning will occur. Please make sure to take the short quiz and respond to the short survey at the links provided. Thank you for your time. I hope the information presented was, has been beneficial and worthy of your time.